With the hearing in the RG Corps Medical College and Hospital case in the Supreme Court of India saw several questions come up again regarding the documentation of handling the dead body and evidence in the case. Questions about procedure and evidence tampering have been alleged in this case, leading the court to seeking clarifications on the handling of the body and evidence in the case. The court also ordered doctors to return to work by Tuesday. The Supreme Court has now asked the CBI to file a fresh report in the case next Tuesday. In the Supreme Court, tough words from Chief Justice D.Y. Chandrachud, who said a key document connected to the post-mortem appeared to be missing. The top court also asked doctors to return to work by 5 p.m. on Tuesday, as it asked the state government to report on what measures have been taken at state-run hospitals to improve security. The CBI has also been asked to file a fresh status report on its investigation. It's been an interesting day in the Supreme Court. The Chief Justice of India directing junior doctors and other doctors who are protesting to return to work by 5 o'clock tomorrow and also making it clear that those who are protesting will have to follow certain norms, saying that there has been a delay of nearly 14 hours since the first information report was uh, lodged. Another BJP versus Mamta Banerjee face-off on the streets of Kolkata. Over the rape and murder of the RG Corps hospital doctor, the BJP is demanding the Bengal chief minister's resignation over the allegation by the victim's parents of the police offering money to them. Mamta Banerjee dismissed the allegation as being slander. Kya abhi bhi Mamta Banerjee aap apne pad par bani rehna chahti hain? Kya ye siddh nahi ho gaya ki aap vifal rahi? Kya ye aapki zimmedari nahi hai ki aap istifa de? Aur istifa kyun? Istifa is liye jisse ek nishpaksh jaj ho sake. Mithya kotha kutsa. Apopocha chokkanto. Shediner video gap. Potte ke ami niche namar pade press kore chilen. Press conference. Presse shangwa dikha chilen. Amar shate shipi chilo. Ebang amar pade avatar baba ma ke ho apnara jigesh kore chilen. Shere kodo amar dikha chilen. Political protests like this one by the BJP where they tried to break these barricades and reach the DC North's office. And of course they were stopped by the police following which a deputation was handed over to the DC North. Why is the DC North important here? That's the context that Mamta Banerjee was talking about. Now, the members of the family of the victim have made a very serious allegation, specifically naming DC North saying he offered them money. The BJP has also demanded the sacking of Kolkata's police chief, Vineet Goyal. The victim's parents have claimed that they cremated their daughter's body under police pressure and alleged that a police officer offered them money to bury the incident. Mamta Banerjee today said the top cop had offered his resignation but was asked to stay. Kolkata Police Commissioner Amar Kache Nijayes Chonek Bar Padottek Kora Jurno. Goto Shad Din Aage. Shamne Pujo, Apna Rai Bara Mai Bolun. Law and order looked at the Janta Vijay Thagbe, Kon Parai, Kon Pujo Hutche, Pujo Committee Guloki Thim Koche, Kothaiki Polish Posting Ache, Eta Pujo Shumoi, Kichudin Dojuduleki Moabarto Shuddhoi. Kolkata and beyond have seen massive protests in this case amidst allegations of a cover up and evidence tampering, charges that have been categorically denied by the police and the state government. The ruling Trinamool Congress in West Bengal says that the CBI has arrived at the same conclusion as the Kolkata police amidst calls for justice in a case where there is no information in the public domain about the progress of the investigation by the CBI in this case. With camera person G.D. Shankar in Kolkata, Saurabh Gupta, NDTV. All right, so lots of key questions asked in this case in the Supreme Court and of course the defiance of Mamta Banerjee and her fight with the BJP quite clearly continues. Joining us now, Shobha Gupta, advocate in the Supreme Court, Yashovardhan Azad, the former IPS officer and Central Information Commissioner, Monojit Mondol, he's a supporter of the Trinamool Congress, Tuhin Sina of the BJP, and we'll be joined by the women's rights activist, Saira Shah Halim, in a, in a moment. Shobha Gupta, let me come to you first. Look at what's taken place in um, the Supreme Court today. A 14-hour gap delay in filing of the FIR. That's something that was flagged today as well. If you look at the overall case, how significant is that? 
Yeah, honestly saying, uh, it appears police and the state feel badly. I'm not for the political gains or loss over here and not a politician, so I would not be talking all that. But seriously, yeah. from the moment one when the body was seen, it appears then and there and from henceforth from that moment, uh, they started missing out the links. They started messing it up around in terms of what exactly they should have done as per the rule book. They failed to do that, which includes not protecting the scene of crime, not protecting the major main evidence in the crime that is the body itself. Then uh, it appears uh, they had a UD entry. They did not have the inquest done, the FIR not done in time. I am saying inquest done, not in time. The postmortem done in the very same hospital. Why? I have a big why on that. And so FIR also, they launched FIR, it seems, at 11.30. I have not seen the paper myself. The state government doesn't seem to be any time sure about the timing of any of these activities. Like each hearing, it, it looks... Quite weird that the lawyers appearing and, you know, you have very good lawyer appearing. The, we have countries, one of the uh, most uh, renowned advocate appearing for the state. But every time they are looking around for the facts and the timings, it doesn't look like they are sure about fact, what, what have they have done exactly, you. what time. Shobhaji, one more question. There is a challan that the Supreme Court, the Chief Justice referred to, without which a post-mortem cannot be carried out. And Kapil Sibal, the advocate... Uh, said that he didn't have it with him. There were others who apparently suggested it had been presented in the High Court earlier on. If that were the case, is that A, a vital piece of documentation, and B, should Mr. Sibyl and, and his other lawyers have had it with them in the Supreme Court? But how come you don't have that in the Chalan? That's my first big question. How do you don't have that? These are the basics. If you are doing a post-mortem, if the body has been recovered, how come the clothing details are not there? You hand over the clothes. First of all, how come the clothes were not on the body? If they were there separately lying anywhere else, everything had to be seized and hand over a chalan had to be prepared. You make an inventory of every single thing around it. Okay. Uh, Shobhaji, just uh, be with us for a moment. Let me go across to uh, uh, my former colleague, Monadipa Banerjee. Monadipa, thanks very much for being with us. You know, Shobha made one, two, three, four, five key points which I, I listed. Number one, the scene of the crime didn't appear to be protected. There was no protection of the body. Why was the postmortem done in the same hospital? Where is this talan which the Chief Justice was also asking for today? And um, details of the clothing which needed to have been presented appear prima facie not to have been presented. Does this not cast serious questions on the way you know, the, the initial investigation was done. Yes, indeed. In fact, if you recall on day one of the hearing at Supreme Court, uh, there was utter confusion about the timeline. I remember the justices repeatedly asking Mr. Kapil Sibyl for an exact timeline uh, of incidents. When was the body found? When was, uh, you know, the uh, uh, post-mortem carried out? When did the judicial magistrate come in? And of course, that glaring question, why was the FIR filed at a quarter to 12 at night? when the incident had happened in uh, at 9.30, or at least the body was allegedly detected around 9.30. So there were innumerable questions on day one, and it's very, very unfortunate that there were an equally large number of questions on day two. And truly, uh, the chalan uh, that, you know, the lawyers are telling us are a must, uh, you know, that must go along with the body being sent for post-mortem, that's missing. And there's also another question that the courts have repeatedly asked and lawyers will ask it and tell it to you anytime you ask them. And that is the postmortem was conducted officially at 6.30. Mm -hmm. Apparently, law says that you cannot, cannot conduct postmortems at 6, after 6. So perhaps, um, you know, your guest, the lawyer, could clarify on that as well. So too many um, unanswered questions, too many gaps uh, that seem to be, uh, you know, surfacing 
on both days of the court hearing, day one and today, day two. Yashwardhan Azad, just on the point that Monidipa mentions, are there certain timings within which a post-mortem can take place? Well, it should, uh, the post-mortem should take place within 72 hours and it was done within 72 hours. And uh, in fact, about the delay in the lodging FIR, this was evident on the first day. This is not a new thing which has been raised. Uh, what had actually happened was at 1.47, uh, the death certificate was given and then uh, UD was registered at about 2.30. Uh, I'm told that the Calcutta police, according to their regulations, first registered UD. But then, you know, I think it is more a case of sloppiness and ham-handedness than any kind of a cover-up. You know, any, any police commissioner should have immediately reacted when something like this happens at RG Car Hospital. He should have sent his deputy commissioner, landed up there, and any IPS officer, when he sees the party, can register a, a case of at least murder straight away. And after doing that inquest, Panchanama, he could have sent it immediately for the forensics and then registered the case of rape later. You know, then the other thing, this political build from both sides is, is you know, fudging the case completely. Okay, Mr. Azad, we'll so, talk about politics later. I just want to, you know, because I do believe that justice is not going to necessarily be served by the politics on either side. I think let's focus on the crime uh, details itself. So my next question to you, Mr. Azad, is um, why should... Um, you know, a post-mortem not necessarily be conducted in the same hospital where a person has died. Uh, is it regular practice that if there has been a death which is questionable, that the body is moved elsewhere? You can't suspect anybody. And I'm not raising politics here. I'm saying politics is detrimental to this case. No, but, so what does the rule book say? There, in, there in is terms nothing of where the post say that it cannot be done conducted. in the same hospital. It cannot be I mean, done. Is that what is that what the rule is? No, I, I, I don't think I'm not aware of any rule that a postmortem should not be done in the same hospital. Because after all, there are not many cases of you know murders or rapes within the hospital. So I don't think there would have been an exception made in this particular case. And the other thing is Okay, just hold that case, thought. I want to come back to Shob uh, to Shobaji for one moment on that. Ma'am, uh, uh, when a crime is just committed, a murder has taken place, a death has taken place, it might, the, the nature of the, of the death itself may be in the initial phases unclear. Would, uh, would it necessarily be, is it an obligation to move the body to another hospital for, uh, uh, you know, for uh, an autopsy? See, there is always a necessity to show a fairness you know, justice should be seen to be done. When postmortem was, wasn't done immediately in this case, it's not as if you found the body, you are referring it, and then the postmortem done. You had consumed enough time. By the time there was hue and cry, there were allegations of something, something beyond uh, rape and murder, and you know somebody uh, uh, nabbed. By that time, he done a lot. So many of the stories, so many of the allegations. In all fairness, the hospital, I'm not saying there is a rule book which says should not, could not have been done in that hospital. To make things look so very fair and to rule out any possibility of any fudging, mm -hmm. they should have actually referred it to some other hospital. Sure. And secondly, about uh, whether the postmortem could be done after sunset or not, not. You know, there is a guideline issued by the Central Government of India in 2021. And it very clearly says that earlier it used to be yes or no. But now since many of the hospitals have sufficient infrastructure, earlier it used to be because of the possibility, you know, the availability of enough life, light. But now we have enough paraphernalia in all the hospitals. So it, this guideline, I'll share it uh, to you, uh, which says... It is permissible. Okay. If you have sufficient para, uh, paraphrenia in your hospital, you can do yes. it. Okay. I want to uh, go across to Saira Shahleem. Um, Saira ji, there have been other question marks as well. For example, questions on complaints about videography, um, right? That that was also unfairly done uh, and not properly done. So do you believe that prima facie on the basis of whatever has been reported so far and on the questions which have been raised, you know, there is a, you know we, can, we can suggest that there was something which was 
terribly wrong, part of a cover-up? That's that's what I'm asking. Uh, definitely. Like, if you see now, there have been thwarted attempts, you know, to kind of intimidate the doctors. And various doctor associations have already given a statement that Srinamul Congress is trying to intimidate a very peaceful doctor's moment. If you look at this entire case, right from the beginning, to the way, you know, the uh, doctors... Death announces are made to the parents. So it's very, uh, you know, fishy. First you say that there is a medical emergency. And then you say your daughter has committed suicide. And then there's renovation work going on, you know, in the site where it happened. Then this whole principal's, uh, you know, role. It took days, you know, for the doctor's protest to carry on. For the principle of Archikar to be even impl implicated or to be even be uh, to to even get arrested, so it's been a huge battle. And right now, the sentiment of people of not only in Bengal of across India and globally, you see there are protest movements happening of doctors in the UK, in the US. The the the, the issue is not just justice for you know Archikar. The whole thing is about enough is enough. You know, a woman feels safest, you know, in a workplace. Here, a lady doctor, 31 years of age, has been not only brutally raped and murdered, her family and the, you know, the um, citizenry of the country are uh, being made to believe another story. So we've seen how the Trinamool Congress has engaged in various multiple scams, be it the Shada, be it the Narda, be it the Chitwan, the teacher recruitment scam. Where okay, Saira, we, we'll look at the politics of other, other uh, you know, issues later on. I don't want to bring that up over here. Right, right, but before right. I go across to the BJP and the Trinamool, I just want to read out one sentence of uh, one of the judges, Justice J.B. Pardiwala, who said, see the third column on the top, the constable who, who brought the body is supposed to carry this form. It's been struck off. So there is no reference of this talan when the dead body is sent for examination. You need to explain. If this document is missing, then something is amiss. That's what we're actually talking about. Now, Kapil Sibyl, as I understand it, or certainly some of the lawyers with him, have said that that will, in fact, be recovered uh, and it will be submitted. So we'll have to wait and see because there are many more hearings uh, of, this, uh, of this case. But Monojit Mondol, as a, as a political analyst and supporter of the Trinamool Congress, do you not believe that the police chief's resignation should have been accepted? Apparently, he voluntarily decided he needed to quit. The state government, Mahmoud Banerjee said, no, stay on. Do you not believe in a case as serious as this, he should have been allowed to go? The answer to all these questions should lie in the fact that how far CBI has progressed beyond what the Kolkata police has done. Does the CBI believe that only Sanjoy Rai is the only culprit or there are some more? So far, CBI has interrogated 100 people, 12 polygraph tests, you have apparently the DNA's matching with the victim and uh, the, that of the victim with the, the, the culprit that is under CBI custody. So keeping in mind everything that you have been discussing for the last one month, what is the wrong that Kolkata police has done apart from these quote-unquote technical errors that you are talking no, about? No, but one second. Which, the technical no, 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 hang on, hang on. You. This is not the way. The, the, if you have called me, to, you have to allow me to answer. No, but I'll not, not, I, I, not be I, I here to, to interject. And, no, no. Hang on. No, no. This is not the way to conduct a debate, sir. No, no, you have I called me. I'm sitting here for 20 conduct. minutes. I'm just trying to say that what you're stating is incorrect. What am I stating? In, what, is, what is incorrect? Yeah, what you are stating that these are technical errors which may have been made. That, and I'm trying to say, and I have what five did I say? technical what did errors. I, say? I did not say these are, serious, I said these are quote unquote, quote unquote technical errors leading to the arrest of a person which CBI also believes that main culprit, because the forensic report said the DNAs are matching, then what is the wrong that Kolkata police has right. done in so, terms uh, of making my, the investigation? Yeah, so fair question, and that's what I was alluding to. Number one, the scene of the crime was apparently not yes. sufficiently protected. You have Number to two, allow me to answer. Was not protected. You Number have three, to allow me to answer. Was, I will I answer will. Let me make my point. Question. I will, I'll come to you next. Number three, the, the uh, post-mortem in the same hospital... Number four, the Supreme Court today said this yes. challenge was missing. All the questions Number will five, be answered, but you have to, you have, to have the gut to listen How to the answer. How is this not significant? Go ahead. I will answer all the questions. 
while the postmortem was not done, you need to have magistrate to do the postmortem that is done in a different hospital again for the sake of fairness. Had the postmortem been done in the same hospital, you'd have said, okay, Sandeep goes, monitored the whole postmortem. That would have been the narrative for you. It's better that postmortem was done in a different hospital by different sets of doctors in but presence it was, of it the was done in the same hospital. What is this? What is what? What is this? What is this? You are not even allowing me to listen to the truth. You have to raise the questions. I will answer 100 questions. Please ask three questions to the CBI. The Kolkata police, the Bengal government, TMC will ask, answer 100 questions. Okay, Please ask three to questions the to the CBI. Point. Does the CBI believe? Does the CBI believe that this person is the main culprit? Does the CBI believe at all that this person was the culprit? Even if the DNAs are matching, that was done in the forensic laboratories, a crime scene tampered with, let me tell you this. The crime scene was protected on the day before. There are so many people who are thronging. There are videos. It's clearly shown they are, they are 40 feet away from that crime scene. So many people were around on the day, on, on, on the day after the, uh, you know, that brutal incident took place. They were there to you know, uh, vandalize in the crime scene. Did you find that kind of video that crime scene was being vandalized? Show me a single video. You have the videos of the crime scenes beyond 40, 40 foot, which was, which was being clarified by the DC North. Show me the videos that crime scene was being tampered with. I mean, hang on, the, the, the main culprit is under your custody. The call letter records are there. The Sandeep goes in, a, in your custody for a different reason. You can't crack this case. If you can't crack this case, then the CBI is incompetent. Under the hindsight, please, sir, raise these questions to yourself. Had the Kolkata police been doing the investigation for the last one mean, month, okay. you, have, you, have, you, have, you, have, you have been gunning for the heads of the Kolkata police, including the chief minister. No question to the CBI? What has happened? The country wants no, no, to but, know. But, what but has happened, second, to, what sir, has happened no to this No questions girl? to the CBI, that doesn't arise simply because it's being heard in the Supreme Court. So it's, a, it's the Supreme Court which will ask the CBI and there is a hearing, I believe, yes. next Tuesday. Yes. So let I, the Supreme I'm not, Court I'm decide not whether that, we, the we job has been done or so not. Many to the Kolkata Supreme Police. Court has not accepted a single question that the CBI? handover to the CBI is important. But just one second. Let me go across to yeah. Duin, who has been waiting very uh, patiently. Uh, Mr. Mondol makes some important points when he says that, look, it's not just the police. There was a crime scene which was tampered with on the basis or violated on the basis of the presence of a large number of people. There was a situation which progressively got out of hand. Don't just blame the Calcutta police or the Trinamool Congress. Look at it factually. So could you answer from a factual standpoint, well, Vishnu, not the, just politics? The way, the way the TMC, you know, continues to be defiant on a sensitive case like this and the way they continue yeah, to we'll trivialize I, I won't even call it lapses. The anomalies, the mischievous anomalies of the case. I mean, hats off to you for having the patience to, you know, continue listening to the gibberish peddled out by the TMC. Fact is, even today's observations by Supreme Court are scathing. Whether it is about the 12-hour 12, 12 delay in the filing of FIR, whether it is about the absence of the chalar of, um, you know, of uh, the the body when it comes to postmortem, or even, you know, something as basic as the time of the crime. One month after the crime, we are debating, we are not even sure what time did the crime take place. And I'm not even going into what happened on the night of 14th August, where 7,000 goons were sent with a specific purpose to destroy evidence. And then they have the audacity to give a deadline to the CBI. With the, with the way the entire system in West Bengal has gone out of the way to destroy evidence, the CBI definitely needs time to All crack right, so the let case. The and Supreme it Court to be the judge but of that and whether evidence has been destroyed or not. I'd like to uh, leave it over here. Uh, thank you all very much for joining us.